Um, so I'm going to talk about radiation, role of radiation in early non-small cell lung carcinoma. And uh, uh, what I've done is that because a bulk of this um, management or role of radiation early stage NSCLC is about stereotactic body radiotherapy. I have, um, uh, I'm going to speak more about that and about adjuvant radiation that, is, that may be required after surgical resection that I'll talk about tomorrow because it will not be possible to cover everything in today's lecture. So uh, role of radiation in early stage non-small cell lung cancer, we know that the gold standard is surgery. So who receives radiation? When is it when the patient comes to a radiation oncologist or the surgeon himself refers a patient to a radiation oncologist? Patients who are medically inoperable or with high surgical risks such as core pulmonary or coronary artery disease or those with a very poor pulmonary function test. And there are patients who refuse to undergo a major thoracic surgery. So how good is conventional fractionation when we want to give uh, curative doses of radiation in non-small cell lung cancer? It was found that the five-year survival rates were dismal from ranging from 10 to 30% which was almost half of what is reported in surgical series. And the possible explanations for this could be, first, obviously a selection bias, that is patients with poorer overall health of the uh, poorer performance status were referred for radiation, or limitation in the maximum dose that can be safely delivered to a tumor through conventionally fractionated external beam RT. Uh, here, by conventionally fractionated EBRT, we mean 1.8 to 2 grams per fraction. And so this is a table showing not beyond, hardly beyond 30% with conventional fractionation. And patterns of failure studies shows that bulk of the recurrences were local, from, ranging from 10 to 55%. The recurrences were mainly local and very few regional or distant recurrences. So that is what brought in the concept of high dose per sitting or, or stereotactic body radiotherapy to a small volume of tumor. So this is delivery of large doses of radiation to a small treatment volume, usually employing multiple beams uh, and small number of fractions. It is a highly Ablative doses are given. We don't give just uh, doses to arrest tumor cell, but this is a kind of a, um, like a surgery for a radiation oncologist. The explanation for its radiobiology goes beyond that explained by LQ model. Probably there is a role of um, the microenvironment of the tumor playing a role in cell kill. And it brings about strong T cell response and endothelial cell apoptosis. So how do we decide the dose of stereotactic body radiotherapy? We know that a, T, a BED or a biologically equivalent dose of at least 100 gray or higher is required for ablation of non-small cell lung tumors. Now here, every patient with non-small cell lung cancer early stage who is not fit for surgery may not be a candidate for stereotactic body radiotherapy. Since we are dealing with very high doses per sitting, selection of patients is of utmost importance. Even before we think about immobilization and motion management, etc., the location of the tumor is very um, critical in deciding a for a fractionation for a pa given patient. So earlier, this uh, zone that you see highlighted with the green color was earlier known as a no-fly zone. But now from no-fly zone, it has evolved to a restricted fly zone. And further, there is now something known as a uh, ultra-central fly zone. Okay, so restricted fly zone is mainly within two centimeters of the uh, bronchial tree. The closer we go to the bronchial tree or the central airways, 
the more are the chances of toxicity. So the fractionation needs to be more conservative in this. So what made uh, SBRT possible for a radiation oncologist? Definitely it is better imaging which assisted us in localizing the tumors better. Since we could visualize better, we could hit it better. And then evolution of radiotherapy equipment in the form of multi-leaf collimators and image guidance and um, better precision. The first step, that, I mean, once the selection criteria is met with, the next step is proper immobilization and positioning of the patient. The positioning should be comfortable, it should be reproducible, and of course, um, it should meet your, it, your requirement of immobilizing or um, uh, managing respiratory motion. So this can be in the form of a cast, it could be in the form of a body fix or a vac lock. We usually use a vac lock at our institute. Um, once proper immobilization has been achieved, we acquire a planning CT scan before uh, in the treatment position using two to three mm slices. A slice thickness more than three mm will not give a good resolution and you may not be able to assess the motion of the tumor properly and it doesn't help uh, in um, uh, image guided uh, matching setup matching also because the resolution of the DRR will not be good. So we acquire the scan uh, encompassing the entire target volume and five centimeter margin in the superior inferior direction. Keeping in mind that the entire lung should be scanned irrespective of the location of the tumor, the entire lung should be included in the simulation image. Every effort should be done to get a PET CT done before the patient is taken up for the SPRT because it helps us to delineate between the tumor and collapsed lung or consolidation. Please do not, I mean, if there is no collapsed lung or consolidation, it is not recommended that you delineate the tumor with the help of PET CT. That should be done with the help of your CECT images in the lung window. PET should be utilized in differentiating between collapsed portion of the lung and the tumor. An intravenous contrast should be used and wherever a 4D CT scanning is available, it should be done to identify complete tumor movement during respiration. Target delineation involves contouring of the gross tumor volume and a planning target volume. Some people do give a clinical target volume, but at our institute, we take the GTV same as the CTV. Uh, to delineate the gross tumor volume, we use the lung window. In case it is more towards the central zone that is cl closer to the larger airways, we also use the mediastinal window or the soft tissue window to identify its medial margin, medial margin of the tumor. A PTV is added to the gross tumor volume based on institutional experience. Uh, factors that take into account are setup uncertainties and internal organ motion. The dose prescription depends on the location of the tumor. Broadly, you can classify the location of the tumor into three categories. One is a very nicely situated peripheral tumor, not abutting the chest wall or the mediastinum. There's another one which is abutting the chest wall and the one which is closer to paravertebral or mediastinal areas. So the one in the first category, we can go up to 20 gray, 18 gray per sitting and complete the treatment within three, three fractions. As we move towards the chest wall, the fractionation becomes more conservative. We reduce the fraction size to about say 12 to 13 grays per sitting. And if it is closer to the central structures, the fractionation becomes even more conservative and we try to complete the treatment in eight to 10 sittings. At our institute, we are treating every day. We are not giving a gap between the fractions. 
and this is another such um, guide given in nccl for fractionation depending upon the location of the tumor the organ set risk constraints are uh, again given by different groups the ones that we are following are the ones given by uk consortium uh, contouring of organs at risk in SBRT involves certain special st structures which we usually don't contour in our normal lung contouring. One is brachial plexus if the tumor is situated in the upper lobe. The major airways that is the trachea and the bronchus. The lung minus GTV not the PTV and liver if it is a lower lobe tumor close to the diaphragm and the chest wall adjacent to the tumor and these are the constraints given uh, with respect to the fractionation schedule that you are using for a given patient that is three fraction five or eight fraction schedule and uh, they have given not just an absolute dose constraint but also some range in which you can deviate if required so this is just an example of uh, brachial plexus contouring and chest wall contouring. So this is how uh, the color wash in the SPRT case may look like. Highly conformal with a very sharp dose gradient. And please remember that the person who is contouring as well as evaluating the plan should do these things in all the three planes, not just in the axial section and the necessary changes should be made. While evaluating our SBRT plan, these are the conformity indices that we use. The R100, R50, R100 and R50 refer to, it's a ratio of the 100% prescription isodose volume. Let's say you have prescribed uh, 60 gray in three fraction. So the 60 gray isodose divided by the volume of your PT. R50 will be 30 gray, that is 50% of 60. 30 gray divided uh, isodose volume divided by the PTV volume. And then V95, that is volume of the PTV receiving 95% of the prescription dose and V90 is 90% of the prescription dose. So uh, the next aspect in SBRT is tumor motion management. This is uh, of utmost importance in lung because lungs are not stationary. They are a dynamic organ causing tumor motion even while delivering radiation and thereby resulting in tumor miss. Size of the movement depends upon general condition of the lungs and also the location of the tumor maximum motion being in lower lobe tumors and tumors which are close to the hilum. So is motion management required in every case? Maybe not. So first of all, you have to assess how much tumor motion is there. If it is more than 5 mm, yes, we may require motion management. However, if managing motion is not giving you any added benefit in sparing the uh, normal structures around the tumor you may not actually you can actually just um, skip this step okay you can just do a proper immobilization with a cast and uh, or a vac lock and proceed with the sprt plan one should ha uh, have a method of respiratory motion management and uh, the patient should be able to comply with your respiratory management procedure. So these are the various techniques. We, there are certain active methods like breath hold methods and there are certain free breathing methods. So the one that we usually use at our institute uh, is respiratory gating. So a CT is uh, the simulation CT, which we were talking about, is acquired in all phases of respiration and it is uh, put into bins. Uh, maximum intensity projection image is uh, selected and the contouring is done on the same for um, creating a PTV. The principle of gating is when 
the beam delivery is coupled with the phase of respiration so if you see the beam is on only when the tumor comes in its path at other times it goes off tumor on the other hand tumor tracking is when the beam tracks the tumor so this is real time tracking of breathing and motion of the tumor the beam remains on but it moves with the tumor and to do this uh, we often require um, certain radio opaque markers to be placed inside the tumor using some interventional procedure response evaluation in sbrt is uh, essential because we uh, tend to repeat imaging every 3 months and any uh, lesion seen on the ct or pet gives us a uh, suspicion of disease persistence or recurrence so it is important to understand that in the first year we are doing a contrast enhanced ct only not a pet ct every 3 months if there is any suspicious enlarged or in increased enhance uh, enhancement in a given lesion then we go for a whole body pet ct again lesion is just avid you have to see the suv if the suv is more than 5 or if it is more than the uh, baseline value then we have to see its morphological characteristics if it is highly suspicious of recurrence then we see whether it is operable or not if it is operable it should be biopsied or resected if it is safe to do so if it is not operable then at least a biopsy should be considered and a non surgical salvage treatment is offered if the suspicion index of suspicion is low then we can just follow up the patient with a more frequent uh, ct or pet ct if the enlargement in the ct is uh, not really uh, suspicious of a recurrence or there are no other high risk features then we just continue regular ct follow ups and the interval of the ct can be increased to 6 to 12 months after one year is completed thank you